I am talking to Marcel Wendt from Digidentity. He's the CTO there, and uh, Digidentity was sold to uh, Solera, a big 6,500 people, uh, which works in data and identity, especially in the insurance market. And But Marcel, I know you as somebody who's been very active in the digital identity world in the Netherlands and beyond. And let's give you a quick update. Let's give each other a big, quick update on what's happening now. Uh, first, where what's the state of digital identity, public and private, in Europe? Can you tell us a little bit about it? Where, where are the highlights? What's everybody doing? And, uh, and of course, talk about the Netherlands a little bit. We're going to talk about the Netherlands, how we're doing there. But let's first start about the most exciting yeah. prospects there. Yeah, so it, it's, uh, at the moment, it is, it's really happening in the UK with the, the framework of UK Verify that's growing very uh, rapidly. Uh, because uh, also because of Brexit, they want to be connected with Europe on a digital way. Mm -hmm. So in Europe, you have the EIDIS framework where all government related identity schemes are connected to each other. Uh, Cops UK Verify is already notified, so they are already connected to it. Mm -hmm. uh, but other countries are coming uh, very quickly. Uh, so Italy uh, with uh, SPID, uh, France with France Connect. Uh, and we will be an identity provider in all these frameworks. Yeah. Okay. So except there's a for, European the there's a European framework that's there. And yeah. what is what is the name exactly? E I D E S. E I D E S. Yeah. How do you spell that? Yeah. E I E I D A S. E D A S. E I D Assurance Network. Yeah. yeah. Authentication yeah. security. So that's the European network of all the digital identities, and they are going to be accepting each other's uh, each other's uh, um, uh, digital identities. So that's really great. An Italian person can come and basically log in to the Dutch side and the German side, and that has to be ready in 2019, which is never going to happen. But it is that is the the, the, the the we have GSM for identity in Europe. Okay, and the UK yeah. is really busy with it. They have a good system, and they have a substantial digital identity system, right? They they take passports and passports and driver license, and they have a very good substantial system. And and you're one of the providers for that. Yeah, we're one of the providers, and uh, within the IDS, you have three levels: low, substantial, and high. And in the government framework in the UK, um, all the identities are low, a couple of low, and the majority is substantial. Yeah, substantial. And so you really can use that for your health records, for yeah, uh, taxation, password to getting a new password. And you said it was growing so fast in December. How many how many substantial identities did you uh, add to the to the system? Uh, last January we did around uh, a thousand uh, identities per hour. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that is really. And five million people, ten percent uh, are are now on it, and they, they grow very rapidly. But it's also technically it's a very good substantial system. What are the other? Yeah. Uh, you said it, Italy is already far. Are they also that good? Do they also have a good system? And France and yeah, so Italy is also a good system. France is starting up. They only have low, um, but we will connect there um, in half a year time now, and we will deliver their substantial uh, as well. Okay, but we need to first to be audited uh, locally in the in the French market. Yeah, and Germany, how are they doing? Uh, Germany is uh, is looking to the current system. That's uh, a card based system with a chip on it, and they are thinking about uh, going to uh, a, a network system as well. So with uh, private identity providers. Yeah, Belgium was because one of no, them. nobody is using. It. Nobody's yeah. using it. Yeah. So, so it has been in the market, but it's 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 not practical. It's with a card and a card reader, and and basically it needs to be easier. Belgium already had the yeah. same kind of system, and eh? with a card and a card reader. Uh, how is are they doing? The Belgium is also now switching to a network. Uh, so, like Cafe Verify, yeah. uh, and and uh, Ardensis in the Netherlands. Also, the Belgians are going to the same system. Okay, talk about America, Australia, some other countries outside uh, outside Europe. Uh, Australia, we doing. Um, we looking for Australia to setting up the same framework uh, there with private parties and government. Mm -hmm. uh, the Canadian market as well. We already successfully connected uh, the UK market to the Canadian market, so you can open a bank account in Canada with your uh, UK ID. Mm -hmm. uh, we did. We did a project for uh, Homeland Security in the US, but um, yeah, the projects are stopped now because they need money for building a wall. 
So you have Brexit and you have the wall. What a great combination. Yeah, uh, yeah what a great combination. Uh, and you, you said that also, they, they because of Brexit, they accelerated the identity system in the UK. Is that really one of the, and, and except for the fraud. I mean, you say the fraud basically saves you 1.7 billion uh, pounds or euros yeah. a, a year. So that is substantial. But Brexit really has an influence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So they really accelerated the, 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 the notification to the IDIS framework uh, before Brexit really happened. <laughs> okay. Are they in panic mode there or are they completely convinced that they will be fine? How is it working? I have no clue what they're thinking. So Nobody has uh, any idea what they're thinking. No. That's, really, that's really interesting. No. Okay. Now, the interesting thing is that the whole framework of the UK was a concept which was 10 years, developed, 10 years ago developed in the Netherlands, right? Which we know as Idensis, which IBM, yeah. KPN, you and a bunch of other companies came up with as a, as a way to have multiple identity providers. Uh, and, that, and that has basically gone around the world? Yeah, that, that, that was really an export product around the world. Uh, just good to see that... that the Dutch were really innovative in that space. Yeah, that's really exciting. We were, were really, we were really innovative, and and so you also also said that in Australia and America, that and, and so Canada, all these have have basically made, they made that framework of multiple uh, providers of digital identity, and that framework has been adopted. Yeah, cool. So the the, re the reason is that you spread the identities between multiple I uh, identity providers. The same what you do with your money on the bank. Yeah, and uh, you have multiple banks, not one bank. Yeah, and on, on the other end, and you can have a government system which is only for government uh, situations. And you have a private system, but you also want a private and a government system uh, together because I want to log into Amazon. I want to I want to prove who I am in Amazon, but I also want to do it as a government. I want to prove it to a bank, and it has to be substantial. And that's what this this government system can it also this government in the UK is it only for government or can it also be used privately? It's it since uh, uh, since half a year now also open for private markets to use in the private market. Okay, but the government is paying for everything, right, in the UK. So to to prove your identity, Correct. maybe not if you want to use that identity and basically go to Amazon that they have to pay a small amount of money to be verified. But to basically get a substantial digital identity, the government is paying for that. Yeah, so the, the, the government is paying, and uh, but the private market will, uh, will also pay uh, for it, for, yeah. the, for the usage. For the usage, yeah. So that's really interesting. And now, what's happening in the Netherlands, the country where that identity framework was really came up with? Public, private, using it, multiple. How is it going there? Yeah, very good. That's why I'm in Zurich now. Uh, it's, <laughs> no. it's, uh, <laughs> it's not very good. It's not, not going anywhere. No, no, no. This, the, the government is going uh, uh, an old route. Uh, uh, yeah, they're really looking to chip cards and chips, caveman's technology uh, to implement. Okay. So there has been, it was, there, there, were, there were different fractions in the government who are basically thinking one way or the other. And, uh, yeah. and they're now taking the old, uh, old, the old uh, government system and making it stronger. But they're going to come up with a, uh, they're going to uh, commission uh, a new public-private identity system, right? Uh, but that's not the digital, that's not the identities which you have come up with in the last uh, 10 no, years no. ago? And that was a public-private initiative. Um, but the commission, uh, what they would with the tender, the European tender, that was promised last year. But, uh, Till today, I haven't seen anything. Okay, so we were first. We did great in pilots. We tried everything, but now to make a good public-private system, we we don't have it yet. Okay, um, in 2019, all these European identities uh, should be uh, compatible with each other. That didn't happen. Um, when do you think we will have a good digital identity system in the public and the private space, which is basically big in Europe, like GSM? Yeah, uh, so I think the, the Germans with their old system are already connected to it. Um, the UK will connect uh, next month. Uh, French with French Connect will connect. So I think the Belgium during this year more and more. Yeah, the Belgians as well. So more and more countries will uh, will connect to the framework. 
Oh. So I think the end of this year we we have a couple of countries connected. And the Dutch? I think the majority. And the Dutch? And the Dutch, we are in the process as well, but with AR canning. So that's for the employee uh, framework. Okay, that's for labor. That's not for person. That's not for uh, for public people. That's not for me as a citizen. No. It's more for uh, me as no. an, uh, if I am an employee. Yeah. Okay. So we are participating a little bit. Okay, thank you very much, Marcel. I now know a little bit more about it because every time I get so confused about digital identity, I know it's one of the things we need so much. And, and obviously it's been very clear that, uh, you know, since uh, that our, our, the, the, the people, the identity which people are really using is Facebook and is, uh, and is Twitter and is other, and we need a good solid digital identity. It has to come from the banks. It has to come from the telcos, it has to come from the government, but it needs to be a good integrated system. And we still don't have it yet, but uh, we're working towards. So thanks for the update and uh, enjoy Zurich. <laughs> okay, thank you.